Uh, you still have, obviously, the powerful AD carries up. The Rengar hover, because I think IG just know that it's really funny that it's still up. Uh, Annie is up and available. The Ari as well, still there. Maokai too, but it seems like we won't get the Rengar, unfortunately. It will be this Maokai. Now, LGD don't have to, you know, sweat that there could be a big kitty cat on the hunt for them. They're sweating this time around. Okay. Let's just see, though, because first pick is, as you already rightfully said, is away from that. But I want to see what supplements it, what supports it, right? That's the biggest thing right now, considering that we are looking at a meta of pretty straightforward competition in the mid lane. The Aries, the Syndra, as we've already talked about. Things like the Annie, Jamada, we saw last game from Hychel, but can still technically be a flex. Well, yep, more so mid these days, right? Yeah, it's been, it's been mid for a really long time. I think once the initial changes came through to annie right it was definitely a flex it was like all right it can go bot it can go mid um a couple of passing changes i think specifically toward the molten shield was what really shifted it back towards being strictly a mid laner and it's remained a very meta sta a stable staple since then and we'll be locked in for lgd it still has the room for the flexibility it's just not something we see often so will ig just take the ari side of the matchup again it will give a lot of magic damage and also just merch red value to uh the side of lgd i would like this tristana to go through uh, not towards the bottom side but for crying i think just having the ad plus ap mid jungle that makes so much sense and they're gonna slam oh, ysk's yeah. jacks blind as go. well i anticipate Venus will go towards his fiora jake but they still have to think about the jungle as well for lgd but already another spicy draft from ig we don't get the rengar but we get a tristana and a bloody jacks like the thing about why is Cam that people need to know is this guy is a carry top player. We are in a meta where Triforce is seen as the holy trinity yet again. Uh, no pun intended. Where Jax, Camille, Fiora, big picks. I'm glad you brought up Venus' Fiora because, yeah, it is on the table. Do IG see it as a big enough threat that they need to ban it away? Or do they start looking towards some of these junglers, Jamada, that have been left yeah. wide open? I think because LGD have gone towards their support, they're going to feel a little bit more confident. I beg your pardon, in going towards Meteor's jungle pool here. Because if you're IG, you kind of already know that Fearness is probably going to have a pretty okay matchup ready. True. Maybe they feel it's worth to throw out a Malphite ban because Malphite is something that can deal with Jax one-to-one -one very well, whilst also being very happy to play into double AD carry comps. And when you likely running the Tristana, I think that ban was a little bit telegraphed. LGD, however, want to remove away you know, probably another powerful lane duo here from IG. They yep. removed away uh, the Lucian. I wouldn't be surprised if they also just take the Jinx off the table, right? Uh, double hyper carry with a Jax and potentially two tanks doesn't really feel like something I would like to play against. I feel like LGD probably wouldn't want to play against it too. So I would anticipate no they look to remove one more hyper carry. Oh, okay. This makes a little more sense as well. Uh, Zaya, just more because, you know, self-peeling tools. Jinx, you can at the very least pick on because she's a mobile and doesn't have the same level of safety as the Zaya. I wonder if there's no Zaya. If LGD have just opened themselves up for maybe one of the more standard junglers that we saw at MSI, Jamata. Uh, Fiora also the ban away, but LGD, okay. now we have to see what they put as a priority. Yeah, I mean, I imagine, I mean, you've got Viego. Graves is still up, right? And mm -hmm. I think you can definitely play it as like a full lethality champ. It was very close to it. Kennen, okay, yeah, this would be pretty fine too. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, disruption to stop the Kennen ult from, uh, to stop Venus from finding big ults in a backline. So I like this and we spoke about the Jinx. I think those are the choices for LGD, right? If you remove away the Zarya, then you remove away the N8 safety that an AD carry can have. Jinx plus, you know, an Enchanter would probably be fine here. Varus as well, strong option and directly into that Aphelios, but it's just going to be the Braum and the Jinx, so a strong 2v2 in the bottom side, and LGD looking to round out, I would imagine, with a setup jungler, uh, with a little bit of engage, and Wukong definitely fits that bill. And Braum versus, uh, versus Cannon, versus Annie, versus Aphelios, a lot of value coming through here from Wink in this game, and I just love that for IG, you know, we looked at them as the Draven aggressive bottom lane, but IG is showing already, there's a bit more versatility thrown into that 2v2 this split, as drafts round out in Jamata, for LGD, are we looking at the all-in, the Wombo? It just feels like an ulti setup that this team at six and skirmishes and team fights is going to become switched on. Yeah, absolutely. You're just on the money, Jake. I think first Herald, second Dragon as well. If the first one's not taken super quick, I think so many powerful AoE ultimates available to LGD just means that is going to be their power. This potential team that can make playoffs like we started to think in spring, but it does come down to this as, hang on, I just saw an assist on Fearness. Do, are we from the future? Is, uh -huh. 
is he is someone dying? Is someone at level uh, one dying? I don't know. Maybe it was a no, glitch. I I think it was a glitch. Don't worry. I, okay. Uh, yeah. Unless Fairness gets an assist really soon, at which point we know shenanigans are afoot, I guess? Um. Question mark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what happens here, baby? I don't know. Well, let's just wait and see. LGD are grouping up. This could be dangerous. IG, maybe it was from the future. The Winter's Bite is there. Envy tagged up, but not followed up. And IG just dropped their way out, dropping a water's wink leaves, making sure he can get full information on that Gromp camp as well. And just getting a bit of an advantage. Now, Jamada, as we talked about, as Crimes is going to get stunned up here, you mentioned IG with a bit of an advantage through men, through bot, and how they can play these lanes. Yeah, exactly. I think that Tristana should be able to get the first wave in. Now, this is a 1v1, which, it yeah, is. Tianjin, it's a little bit hard to lose that, but both junglers will walk away level 1 because Mio was able to get enough small chickens. You can see if Tianjin even got one more, he would have leveled up, but he doesn't feel too bad about it. He can go over to his own mm -hmm. Raptor camp and just level up. Also leashed a little bit of XP. Still didn't get to level two. But either way, just sets Meteor a little bit further behind and sets him on a bit of an awkward first path thing where now he could potentially be locked into moving towards the top side, which is perfect for IG because the bottom side is where their strength lies in the early laning phase. Yeah, true. Again, that's what we wanted to talk about is how this top side could be a little bit more volatile. Venus already pushing out YSKM. Jamal, look at the start of this lane. This is great for Venus as he hits level two and continues to zone him away. Yeah, exactly. And one thing, as I hope we get a little bit of downtime, with the minion changes to the side lanes, right? Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the intended change is to kind of make it a little bit harder for mid laners, specifically to Roma's. This level one ward is going to actually catch out Meteor on his Grom. So, is. nice information gained by IG is that if you're in, you know, a shoving lane like this, it can be quite difficult to get out of it in the isolated 1v1, find windows for good resets, especially once the teleport is down. So we'll see if Venus can keep up this pressure, right? Because if he can chunk out YSKM, force out an early teleport, as long as Venus can also reset himself uh, at some point, he can keep YSKM in lane for so long because the minions keep a lot of their movement speed as they uh, make True. it back into lane when it's shoved up. YSKM doing his best to trade back. Uh, another intended change here, the call for help. Uh, from these minions. When Wisecam trades underneath the tower, the enemy minions aren't hitting him, so that also helps out just a touch more in those 1v1 trades. Well, speaking of trading, Crying gonna do his own here on the high chow. Good little burst damage to get him to half health, but Jamada, I mean, if you want to complain about something else, minions just suck under I, turret now. I, I hate I, it. I, 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 yeah, I, you know, I've been playing a lot of top lane this year. This is the part yep. where the cast makes the, the cast about them. Uh, <laughs> just, just to learn, just to learn the role, right? Um, and it's been a while since I played it, but I came back on 1310 after MSI, and man, it, I, like, I play a lot of lane bully champions where I shove yeah. in the lane and, you know, I just feel bad for the enemy laners because, like, minions not actually helping in the trades is such a big deal. I mean, you even saw it there, right, when YSKM traded earlier on Venus. That's an extra 100 HP he'd probably lose for making a trade like that happen. <laughs> Doesn't happen like that anymore Again. on these patches. Tianjin, these are his chickens, man. These are, <laughs> these ain't meteors. Gonna force them out of the top side jungle. Won't find Krugs uh, as they were picked up earlier on, but pressure still fell. Man. Unfortunately, won't be able to make this dive on fearless work. I don't think maybe the second Now back comes through. Yeah. But does he teleport in? Surely. I mean, that's a big wave yeah. to miss. But you're right. I mean, Tianjin right now renting out a KFC, it seems. And Meteor losing a couple of camps, but still even as are down. Oh. What? Oh, the cameraman, <laughs> you! Oh, uh, wink at him, and they'll be dead. Beauty still. Great stuff from Wink. And again, it's just denying Meteor a little bit more, right? IG's tracking of the enemy jungler has been sublime so far in this game. Number one, they've pretty much had his number from start to finish. And not only was he denied basically two chicken camps in a row, he's now taken uh, a loss in the scuttle department, which is probably the biggest hit to a jungler's ego you, uh, you could give him. Got to give a bit of credit there for Wink, but also, I mean, credit we've been giving IG all series long. As I want to take a little bit of a stock of what's going on, despite the little steal there. Meteor is keeping up with CS, it seems, but he has been tracked through his early jungle. Ken Jen obviously doing a good job to meet him there each and every time. Just need to pause. Venus in a bit of trouble. YS Cam getting some really good trades here. Even through the minion wave, that was like a minion and a half of a wave, Jabata. And he pops yeah. up, and Venus just gets bopped. Yeah, really good time because the minions do amp the damage of 
the counter strike as well so if Venus is oh, stood yeah. in a wave like that wise can actually just jump inside the wave and get a massive amount of burst damage out of the counter strike now back. level six is here for Venus. so there's a lot of burst available but i just don't think he's gonna have lethal on either of these two tianjian just gonna take a back foot doesn't want to take the 50 50 as he hasn't reset yet it's been six minutes he's got a lot of gold yeah Maybe thinking there's a little bit sus. Venus sitting in the middle of the wave. Tianjin does make that reset happen, but now we look back towards mid because guess who's jumping all in again? Kryon doing some real good trades. He also hits the turret, by the way. I forgot that interaction existed where Satchel Charge, uh, not yep. Satchel Charge, you know what I'm talking about, Jamata. As Tibbs comes out, I chow, a trade of his own. Actually gets the AoE onto turret. So Kryon close to getting that first plating in the mid lane in the meanwhile. Chow just puts a little bit more damage into the wave here. And look, I, I feel like we're just chilling out a bit more than we were last game. Mr. Marta, we got ourselves a minute 30 till the Herald. Dragon's sitting up there and chilling. I feel like we might have both objectives up at the same time to fight for. Yeah, we definitely could do. Feels pretty good for LGD, all things considered, though, because we spoke about how it's level six where their skirmishing power really comes online, right? Uh, Chow obviously has the Annie out on the field right now, but. Or the Tibbers, rather. Uh, on field right now uh, it does have a pretty short cooldown if it stays alive the entire duration so it won't feel too bad and meteor has actually been put far enough behind to the point where i feel like it might take him a while to hit level six at this point yep. uh, but still matching level uh, with tianjin right now smite's not available however for tianjin so this skull he's got to kind of wait out a bit he's got 10 seconds left but with the support of his bottom lane he should be able to score that one and again meteor is just denied more resources and again tianjin just kind of Playing the Maokai, I feel like, as we were used to seeing from uh, the WE jungler. I'm trying to think, Jamata. Maybe I'll lose my train of thought here for the time being. His stun comes out. Meteor not being respected nearby, but he can't get the range onto Kryon. So he rocket jumps away. Kryon then just fishes the wave closer towards him. But this won't be able to get his first plate of the game. Remember, that Satchel Charge did a lot of damage. Rather, explosive charge, explosive shot. They all sound so similar. It's now <laughs> that we're getting more champions, more items into the game. Like, there are so many names for things. It's hard to keep up. It's like, again, complaining about being a caster is just such like a first world oh, problem, you know? It, it really is. You know, me and me and Joe, yes, they were talking about like all of the AD item changes. Of course, the component yep. like paths in having to relearn those sometimes, you know? He saw a new quiver, he's like, oh yeah, you know, that champion's going into uh, a mythic, and it's like, well, oh, actually, new quiver doesn't go into mythics anymore. <laughs> it feels bad, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dude, I, I, I can't get over the, you know, the new Orn changes, as hopefully we will see in an Orn get to talk about Cry of the Shrieking City for the Echoes of Hellion, huh? which I think is a busted <laughs> item, yeah. Well, it makes sense. Cry of the Shrieking City, Echoes of Hellia. Hellia is obviously a city so it oh. makes sense that the orn upgrade is called okay. you know that that's a banger name but okay let's just let's see if it ever comes up first we've got to see some echoes of helia did you guys see any echoes of helia yesterday i don't remember seeing i think we're still uh, seeing Shirelius. Top of my head we did we did have uh we did have nami but it was mandate rush right because uh i am so much cheaper it deals so much more damage and gives so many more attack speed stats engage is coming in here on the top side tianjen with the right ulti as well there's a slicing mouse from tianjen doesn't care he smashes the ground wow. and lets them know that ys camp will be receiving the bounty for the first blood for this jack's top as crying has the audi out of there high chow chasing after him crying just at half hp but an ig win in the top side is what ig fans know will do them well yeah that felt like a play that was gonna happen for a while he was eyeing it up a couple of minutes ago as well tianjen but this time around, Fearness a little bit too far up the lane. Ultimate just locks him in place. And surprisingly, they won't be able to pick up this Herald after the fact. It's actually going to yep. be LGD who rotate their bottom side up. And you can see, I think IG are actually halfway uh, into rotation for this play, but recognize they'll be too far behind. So this isn't even really punished by LGD uh, or by IG rather. LGD are effectively kind of just getting this Herald for free. No Dragon is being picked up. No plates are being stolen away on the bottom side. And they're even going to keep their bottom laners in the top. Hello? 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 Guys, Hello. please. Hello. No. Check. No, he's... Okay, well, I'd he's, be spewing. Uh, uh. It's a new tactic. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, God, I'm sorry. Uh, I guess at that point, they'll realize the Super Mega Death Rocket flies through. They'll realize that no one in the inventory 
has a Herald. Tianjin coming up to defend the top side. They're like, hmm, this would have been a lot easier with a Herald. In fact, they probably would have gotten close to getting first turret. But Jamada, it stays standing. You know, this is my last day on the LPL for a little while. <laughs> and this Why? is the second time. This is the second time I've seen some shenanigans like this in the span of 24 hours. And you know, maybe it's a good thing I'm not here for the next couple of sure, weeks. Sure, sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, but I mean, look, uh, for LGD, they still get the plates, right? They still get a fair amount of plates on the top side. Some CS is denied. But like, come on guys come on come on i mean let's see what ig do in response now right because mm -hmm. realistically lgd should have picked up an entire tower the play kind of fizzles out a little bit sooner and it's maybe given ig a, a window no to set away. up in this river thought they would but doesn't seem to be the case here so let's talk a little bit about setup for this dragon then because you know wink now has ulti we've got arms ulti off cooldown coming soon as well everyone's got everything up it seems and I'm kind of expecting an all-out brawl here as no one's touched the dragons now. Everyone moves back to wave. Krine and Haichao battling it out, but Tibbers, what a rigged champion that is as Krine is now bullied out yet again. We'll see if that gives LGD any windows towards this objective that is waiting so eerily long to be taken. I mean, 12 minutes first dragon, Jamato. It's ages. Oh, that's yeah, cool. it's uh, quite a long ways away from where it's normally taken, right? 12 minutes in. But for LGD... I mean, they can fire whenever they want. I will say for IG, in the long run, this should technically benefit them, right? They're running double hype carry ADCs. Jax is also, you know, kind of a hype carry in his own strange, weird way. Yeah. Are we getting a replay of them leaving the Herald? Did he... Okay. Did he uh. think that he picked it up? This is... This is key. This is crucial. He went for the plants and then just forgot. Okay. I, well... He wasn't looking anywhere else first. I mean, look. Accident, <laughs> guys... There'll be people in chat laughing, but are we any better? Look at our no. ranks. Look at ourselves. No. Guys, yeah. I have found an achievement to get to gold two the other day. That's how sad my League of Legends career is, okay? So I will give Meteor the benefit of the doubt. He was a national or a global ping pong champion as well. How many of us can say we have done that with League and ping pong? Yeah, he was actually. He was a professional ping pong player. I don't know how far he went. But I'm going to say Olympics, question mark? From what I remember, wow. like, five years ago, four years ago? That's really cool. Uh, that's, it is cool. That's a cool fact. Uh, yeah, you know what? Never mind. He's forgiven. If he can play ping pong, he's probably a bro. Um, he's not really forgiven, though. Let's be real. But we no, just know no, we're not any he's better. Not, no, no. <laughs> we're not. Uh, you know, we joked about that dragon. It did get taken down, finally. So we're going to have a late soul. And that's what I was getting to. For IG, with all the scaling, they'll feel pretty happy about the fact uh, that there won't be a soul on the map for so long because realistically you get to you know two and a half three items on crying on arm you feel great about that wise cam it's just going to continue to try and bully out uh fairness as best as he can staying even in cs in this matchup uh, is a pretty good indicator that the jacks is uh going to remain on curve for the immediate future and i think once he gets his mythic online he still looks like he's going towards the divine sunderer no triforce uh mm -hmm. here in this game just being able to have that little bit extra amount of sustain will definitely go the distance in making sure those trades stay in your favor. Which changes in competitive play as well, doesn't it? Like, I feel like what passes for solo queue and what items are, you know, OP might not always make their transition in, right? Divine Sunderer against a team that will build a bit of health as well. Uh, people like Nautilus, people like, like the Wukong too. Let's not forget that naturally the cannon will have a bit as uh, Dreadline brings in Wink. He's by himself. He has to pop the ulti. How much trouble is he in? Is the question you're all asking at home. And the answer, not too much as... And remember, there's no dragon up. It was taken by IG a little bit before. So they're just fighting around the bottom side, looking for an advantage into the enemy jungle. They'll find none. They'll only find Wink's ulti in the end. Yeah, only Wink's ult. And they'll back away. And I mean, realistically, I don't think they're going to find another engage opportunity like that mm. for a little bit, just because of the pacing of this game. I think LGD really do want to try their best to blow open the game with a play i think around the next herald that spawns in a minute if ig are looking to contest it the first items are starting to come in very slowly but surely here for lgd right the divine thunder on the wukong makes him a complete beast <laughs> uh, fearness as well <laughs> i wonder if no okay i wonder if he's gonna stay in the bush like he felt like he was unseen very close to being hit but uh, for fearness as well that rocket belt i imagine uh, has to be pretty close to being completed and Hai Chao's first item is the Luden's Echo, so that's up and available. So LGD, they're online and ready to team fight and skirmish. It's just about whether or not they're actually going to get the opportunity or whether or not IG give it to them. 
Well, we have to see two minutes till that next track, and it's been a slow one. Everyone's sitting at home, just chilling and waiting, because the last game was like 30, 40 kills or something. We popped off. But as we said, and we talked about in draft, like this is a lot of, uh, this is a lot of alt buttons, Jamada, a lot of all in AOE, massive team fight from angles here from LGD. We also mentioned that IG, if those backline carries stay alive, they will pop. So uh, we got to look for that damage coming out now with the one items you mentioned, especially since they're moving towards this top side Herald. Looking for the engage up here. Uh, IG aren't going to find it instead. They'll get Fearness's TP out, actually. He used that towards the top side of the map, so he does himself a bit of priority top. But Jamada, crying on high chow. I just want to see someone die. I might sound like a, a bit of a psychopath, but I really need to see something happen because everyone's just posturing. But no one's pulling the trigger. Yeah, I think none of the Storm Reasons there for Cry and also has the Merc Treads, the ability to actually space a little bit better if you get that first war attack off. Certainly there. So we might uh, have your wishes answered very, very soon. Uh, but for now, again, both these teams just not really willing to pull the trigger on anything too aggressive for now. But again, this finally this Herald which is spawning up, which is being toyed with by Tianjin. Time and time again, LGD. I think what LGD want right now is they want mid lane priority and they won't go into the river unless they have it. But IG with the Jinx uh, and the Rockets are able to take it and so freely that it's just locking them there. And then because the waves are like coming in at the same time on the side lane, it means that YSKM and Fearness can what? never really rotate in properly. But here we go. That's High Chow. YSKM might have to deal with both of them. High Chow's come on in. He hasn't been spotted on the TP. That was for the Herald. IG are playing it epically cautious though with YSKM wow. getting backed off by Fearness. They're just giving this. But the problem is, Jamada, you already mentioned, it's not just wave clear, it's range and damage. They have 280 carries. Bot just died. Mid is now going to get shoved in as well. IG are probably getting a hell of a lot more gold than they should have from this. Yeah, certainly will be. And I think if IG were a little bit more decisive as well on the back end of this to give up the Herald, shoving the wave, get a little more damage down into that tier one, they could have maybe even taken it. Maybe I'm overstating. They kept the members there, but they will get this second dragon, right? Uh, and stacking up towards what looks like it's going to be a Cloud Soul will feel good, right? For a lot of these champions, the movement in to uh, LGD will feel alright. Against right. engage. Prom. Dangerous. Here's the Maokai ulti as well. Wink absorbs everything. There's a depth charge. High Chow's gone pretty deep. Excuse me, it's Fearness. He's bopped back under the turret. They used everything oh on Wink boy. and now Envy going forward, but that's YSKM, baby. Jin Zhao launches in, but the only person getting launched in is this mid laner crying. He's in, then he's out, and he's free fallen. Following it up under the turret, on underneath, he'll survive too. Tibbers gets angry and tries to buff him for dead. But when you use everything on a Brom, you better expect what's coming next. It's a one for five, clean, almost ace for IG. YSKM just goes a little bit too deep for High Chow on the end of it, but they don't care. They're gonna pick up two towers as well on the back end. And this is all because LGD wanted to try and stop them from rotating in and commit for that tier one tower with the Rift Herald. Excellent fight from IG. And it's just an overextension from LGD, right? I think once Fearness gives over his life because he tries to commit the ultimate, you just need to sack your uh, top laner here, right? The Maokai ultimate's already flown through. There's no more CC left up, but they want to help. And I think this overcommitment for three, four seconds to bring in YSKM, even though the stun only hits onto one, I, I'm not going to lie, the animation looks like it should have stunned all of them, to be fair. Yeah. As soon as he comes in, it lights out because then you start to get the resets going for Arn, for Cryin, and you can see how quickly the fight turns on his head in IG's favor. This team is nuts. I mean, there's been some moments, let's be real, that IG have been humbled a bit by LGD, but the majority has just been these team fights that are incredible. Cryin especially, now on yet another carry. It was Ari game one. The Tristana here going into harm's way without any cares in the world. Just having a day of it, isn't he? His wife can. Um, uh... Whoa! Trying to take out the family within the middle. High Chow just dies! Essentially a 1v4. YSKM does not care. Man, YSKM has uh, he's been in the hyperbolic time chamber, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> over the <laughs> over the off-season. One versus four. Oh, I think he's also going towards the new hole breaker too, which is an item, which was an uh, efficiency buff over 1310. I don't think Tianjin is gonna make anything stick here. Just a little bit of poke onto fairness and this is something that you can maybe expect from uh, split pushing champions whenever they do come out uh, of the locker right the camille 
uh, the Fiora, the Jax will lean on the Holebreaker a little bit more, uh, a little bit of extra AD and some movement speed crucially as well, given to the item. Uh, does make it a little more desirable to a lot of these uh, bruisers and that want to play on the side lane and then occasionally, you know, rotate over that movement speed helps out so much. And again, when Wise Cam is now battering down people like Venus, going to be a lot of fun to watch because now got an item advantage. Despite being down CS, was able to pick up a bit of plating, I believe, and at least rather find himself a, a bit of pressure through the turret too to get the gold. In a favorable position, but let's be real, Jamata. If we're talking favorable position, it's crying, it's on. They're probably the majority of this 5,000 gold lead at 21 minutes. These double 80 carries, so far, LGD haven't really been able to touch them. And I think we've got to give credit to the disruption. Tian, Jen, and Wink have been this massive wall that LGD haven't been able to get oh my God. back. Holy <laughs> crap! Oh my god, now Meteor's like, oh, I can get in there, but Cyclone's on the other two. He's been caught out too. It's a death charge, that's great though. Arn will die, but Krine still free hitting. Meteor lucky to get away, but meanwhile, as they fly in, Krine in a bit of trouble. Venus takes him out, and finally it's a win here for LGD as Wink runs into the fray. And a baller move from the mid laner, but it also cost IG so much. Yeah, I think because IG tried to rotate over and cover, LGD cut them off at a crucial point, and now Tianjin is up with YSKM no. in a two versus four, but Hijal has teleport, so it'll be a 2v5 very soon. This should just be going over to LGD, oh. almost no doubt. YSKM doesn't want to give it up. I think he's the one calling over. Okay. Tianjin, he has flash. They can flip it, but I mean... Ah, uh, Tianjin, uh, he has flash available. As you said, Blast Code is there. They all jump on over. Tianjin, in the end, will be dying here. They ain't taking any chances. We ain't getting any of those flippy barons we saw at MSI. It's a safety objective here for LGD. They claw up their gold. And IG's one raw move is punished nicely by our red-sided team. Yes, yeah, so let's take a look at the solo kill because it's just crying finding a great angle. Gale Force as well for the final 300 HP. Yeah, and then Arn and Wink just looking for Meteor. Then get re-engaged on double Cyclone. It's a double knock up for Arn. Just feels bad. And Wink, unfortunately, being held up by Jin Jiao. Really well played by him to stop him from being killed for. Venus with the teleport just executes crime because he was so low from the 1v1. And Wink has to commit his life. So IG trying to cover for that mid laner who honestly didn't really need the coverage. I think he was out. Uh, cost them a Baron. And now the gold is also back to even. IG probably can't contest this uh, third dragon of the game. 5k gold lead thrown away here by IG. And LGD now fully back in it. And the dragon stacking as well, as you just mentioned. LGD not only just back in it, but we have to go back to what we know is true. Envy with his debut here today in a great position all of a sudden. Two items here on the Avelios, start to stack up himself. Venus as well in this cannon that we'll start to forget about. Now's a proto belt and a void stuff. So two items, two items, two items, two items. I'm looking across LGD's members and I'm seeing twos. And especially with that Zonya's Hourglass, Hai Chao can start making some moves with Flash available. Jamada, it's looking good here for LG, so walk me through what their next game plan is with this Baron. Yeah, I think just trying to knock down some more towers, right? They haven't gotten a single one, so I can't even use the word more. They just need to knock down towers of the Baron, plain and simple. We'll see how much wave clear IG uh, can be afforded with, but I think with how powerful some of these carries are just standing in front of the tower, it should be enough for MV to just kind of be escorted around the map and take those standing bits of gold uh, away, Wait. crying. Oh, finish that. Oh, well, yes, he is. You'd expect it. There's the ulti into the wall. Separates Venus. The range, the gale force. He rocket jumps and he gets it. But now he needs to reset and get out of there. Krynas flash available, but he thinks he's dead as well. Meteor books on the head. And that one for one is now traded out as Tianjin even wow. ulties through. And uh, going to be blocked here by his support, but it enables IG to get the mid lane turret in the process. Yeah, I mean, IG, you know, they trade one for one on the map and get a tower. It's still an uptrade, right? This is Baron time, so this feels quite poor for LGD. Uh, not really gaining much from the Baron overall, right? They do claw themselves back into the game gold-wise, so it's all right. As, uh, I didn't quite see why Wink had to flash for a second as I was looking over my second monitor. But of course, it was being collapsed on, so that's the summoner spell down. But for LGD, you know, the, go the, the net positive is still there, right? They're up 200 gold from claiming the Baron. Uh, but not really gaining much in the grand scheme of things other than time will certainly feel bad considering IG are the ones with the double AD carries and a split pusher on the side. True. And again, that whole break you already talked about, the longer those lanes, the more Wisecam can build up those waves in Jamada, the more that we can see this Jax 
take over as the approach of six as well. Side lanes versus team fighting. We've already seen some good ones here from LGD. We've seen some good punishes. And again, IG were the ones who threw away that 5k gold lead. This should have been their game too. It should have been a kind of a clean finisher, right? We talked about IG being a team that could hit playoff contentions this split, but it's moments like that that remind you why they didn't make it in spring, while this team who is still comprised of three out of the five members struggle to get it across the line against some of those greater teams. You can't make those mistakes against our top eight, our top ten, because you won't yeah. get away with it. And, you know, against LGD, we have to see if they're another team that won't let IG get away with this big blunder. Yep, nail on the head. They have to be clinical against these teams who you know, realistically have very similar aspirations to them, right? LGD started to positively trend throughout at the back end of spring. I'm not saying that they're necessarily going to, you know, make top 10 for sure in summer, but, you know, you bring in uh, an AD carry like Envy, it's pretty clear what the intentions are on your yeah. side, right? You're trying to build on what was a pretty positive back end of the split for IG. You have to take down a team like this because these guys will be you know your, one of your direct competitors if you're thinking about ig being a team that you know bottom side can kind of finish maybe worst case 12 best case maybe eight seventh right that will likely be the ceiling you have to take down a team like yeah there's no excuses right ig need to stand to the occasion and in one minute 30 i feel like we're gonna get a greater answer to that as well we've got the dragon coming up one taken by lgd they stopped the flow of this cloud soul but uh, IG still have a bit of power. The three item Trist down the three item Jinx, you can see there now as well. We already mentioned the Jax is fast approaching third item, which looks like Wits End as well, which makes sense with the double AP solar laners. I want to mention that we've got three items on NV2. So we do have the LDR there, Jamada. That is going to deal with a lot of this Maokai, maybe a lot of the Brom as well. Some of the tanky stats now having a bit of an option here for LG to pass through. Yeah, absolutely. Can cut through these frontliners. Needs the good guns too. At the moment, sat uh, on the Charcrims and the Gravitums. Wants to swap the white gun out. No doubt should be Infernum after that. Uh, and even though it's not like the highest DPS guns in the world as like a duo, you still have a lot of utility and AoE, right? Between uh, blue and purple. So we'll see whether or not he tries to uh, get through those magazines as Cryon just being a nuisance on the side lane. is actually pulling a lot of priority up here, but with 20 seconds left, uh, until the dragon spawns up. It shouldn't really cost LGD uh, much at all. There's the Infernum swap over. So uh, for Envy, he's got one or two choices. It looks like he's trying to empty out the Gravitum and this could give him maybe Calibrum, I think. So Sniper uh, plus uh, Blue, AOE and range. Really, really strong combo as well. Uh, while we're just talking about items, a BT, sure. just note that Tristana has 358 AD. Oh, Thanks yeah, cool. to 40 <laughs> AD because he's almost level 18. Remember now, it doesn't give that shield as I might need to stop talking about that because, oh my god, Infernum splash damage. He's just hitting the mark. Wink has to stand in front as LGD are trying to run them down. The range from Arn is good here, but watch Crying as well. With those draw beads, he's now getting to that point too. As LGD zoned out of the mid wave, want to walk towards Baron, but they're sitting on the edge of vision. Oh. Jen gets rooted in. The team's not here, but the jungler's now down. Before this Jax can get in, who's soloing the dragon, LGD might have found their window to get Baron again. Yeah, that feels so bad. And now Wise Chem is trying to salvage the situation and go towards the side lane, pick up the tier two, because I think they know that they're going to lose the dragon. Oh, the Baron, rather. So they'll send Cryon on to the dragon instead, try and get this tier two and trade out as much immediate gold as they can. But that's a massive pick from LGD, who pick up the second Baron of the game. And again, still a lot of towers standing on the map for them to pick up. So this time around, you hope, you know, don't get picked off, don't have the tempo on the map broken up. And they should be able to pick up a lot of extra gold into the back pocket specifically of Envy, but Fearness and Haichao as well has to be noted. I mean, actually, to tell a lie, Fearness just hit third item, whereas Haichao still wants to make it to his. But as you said, not much to be gained from IG. A single turret in the bottom side. That top turret was going to fall over from a gust of wind anyway, but Haichao now finally able to secure it. We're having a look at gold on the bottom of our screen, but someone is just toggling and annoying me. Keep it on gold. <laughs> I want to see what's going on. I think they're showing us that High Chow was sitting on two and a half thousand gold. Yeah. He's now back. He's picked up his Void Staff too. So we are singing the praises of LGD at this point. This Baron looks so threatening, Jamada. I'm trying to clear it away, but the minion waves still pretty hard to deal with with the threat of Nautilus, the threat of Venus as well. That engage that LGD have been utilizing well. Uh, even under turret, IG have to be careful where they stand. Yeah, like the thing is for IG, even with the limited engage options they do have, they can't really, you know, uh, heedlessly go in because LGD, their engage tool is very strong. They also work 
as Peel Tools, YSKM, okay. finds a pick on the side, potentially, and Shinji, I was dead in the mid lane, Jake, what's going on? He just decided that life was not worth living, apparently, YSKM, as you said, on the sideline, played it out again, in front of the whole team, just when IG, you thought they were out, and getting bullied around, they pull it back in. My goodness me, YSKM, as well, wits end, completed, right, so he just feels so much more confident to walk into high chow, even though he's got the Void Star just can't deal as much damage as the Jax can in that kind of situation. And now, again, right? Jake, we said LGD with Baron, they need to get stuff done, not have the map broken up. But it's been broken up again. Now there's an engage. Onto Arn and Cry, and it's good. They've got 180 carry meters. Done a great job of setting this up. But Venus unable to find anything more. And Cry still alive. Why is Cam on the back end decides that Envy is going to get a bonk on the head as well? Double inhibitor open up now as Meteor and Jin Jiao threatening the low health bar Jax, but IG have done it again against this barren up team. They're threatening not only one in here, but two. They'll only walk out with one, but Invictus Gaming finding the mark somehow, even after a great engage from Meteor. Yeah, really great, but I think nice bit of discipline on the back end of this from IG. If this is IG and Spring, they go for that second inhibitor, they could get teleported on by Hai Chao, and I think that's what they're counting on. What happened in the mid lane? It was just the clip of the Winter's Bite. And then he knows he has to come home. <laughs> oh, fair enough. It looks worse than it is. It looks worse than it is. He was going to get stunned up and likely die anyway. So uh, just goes in. And uh, yeah, flash away from Hai Chao from the Counter-Strike. But unfortunately, yeah, YSKM has a flash of his own and yeah. finds that solo kill on the side lane. YSKM, that wit's end now finally complete as well. That side lane, speaking of, it's a level 18 jack you have to go up against. And Jamada. It's not the only one, right? Cryon now with four items, Storm Razor and Phantom Dancer. That is a mighty combo, but moreover, we all know the new Storm oh, Razor is ridiculous. And we're about to see ridiculous in the flesh. Venus goes golden, but how far can he survive? He's got the ulti available, but will he use it? YSKM responding to the teleporters, rest of LGD coming topside. But look at Bot, this little Tristana yeah. that could. Oh, right. Tristana pushing on the bottom side. And I'm going to be honest. I'll take YSKM in a 2v1 here. I think he wins. Oh. I think he might. Oh. Let's have a look with oh. Oldbreaker as possible. Right, but the stun's up there. Surviving for a long time, but a shutdown over to Venus. Hightshow and Venus, however, have committed. However, IG are unable to find anything on the bottom side. So it feels like a meritable trade. Yeah, goes in, doesn't get anything with the Counter-Strike, and as soon as no stun connects and no consistent DPS can be found, they just burst him down and CC him. So really good job from the LGD solo laners, and like you mentioned, cleared out on the bottom side from the LGD. Yeah. I think for IG, they probably just need to wait for this next dragon to spawn up, pick up the soul, and then see if they can also transfer it uh, into the Baron as well, right? They've not been able to pick up a single Baron, and I think that's what's been uh, the biggest issue here for IG, the fact that they've you know, given over critical picks whilst the Baron's been up to then not be able to pick up the big purple worm buff to try and close out this game has been the kicker. LGD has to be, you know, given credit though, the amount of tenacity they've had to sure. find those picks and continue to keep IG on their toes. Well, in five seconds, maybe we compliment them again. It just depends because this 20 second dragon timer is what we're looking towards, folks. Does this go the distance? Or have LGD run out of spunk here in the game? I've got so many questions. It's been a back and forth for a very slow early game. Things feel like they're only heating up. As look at Krine in the top side yet again. He's got teleport available. And Jamato, it looks like IG want to play this side lane. Really put tempo into the game and say, hey, LGD, if you want Dragon, that's fine. We're on salt point. We are dictating the pace. Yeah, we really don't care about this Dragon, right? It's one individual cloud. We will potentially take or open up the base yet again. We can take control of the Baron side area, get mid lane oh. priority, do so much, even look for a fight on the back end. YSKM coming in, it's a three man oh. counter strike again. Envy, oh no, what a debut! Meeting with Crime, meeting with IG. It is a massacre, it is a ham sandwich. Ladies and gentlemen, take a bite because Invictus Gaming, they're hungry tonight. They want to finish this game in a clean 2 0. The game itself has been a little bit up and down. I think more credit to LGD than anything else. We'll see if Hai Chao and Fearness have anything to say, but in a 5v2, I think it's going to be quite difficult. And IG are cruising off the back of a very strong debut from Cryin and the rest of IG oh, coming yeah. together too. Cryin just having a day of it, as you said, now for the final blow, but Fearness, oh baby, is it not over? I think we got a bit more time in the game as Wink now stands there, Fearness. Just take it apart, everyone, but no. YS Camp can 1v2. However, timers oh. are not in his favor. 
that cannon pressed a button and got sent into a happy place. My god, the cannon plus any damage was absurd. A triple kill goes over. Let's see. I mean, this should be done and dusted, Jay. This should just be done and dusted. So it's kind of like Maokai goes in, kind oh, of pushes. Oh, oh no, that's <laughs> like... Yeah, that's that's tough. I didn't quite catch that. I thought Kryon was just caught in the ultimate. I didn't realize <laughs> that he was pushed in. And with the death timers as long as they are, LGD are going to get another Baron. I, I swear, if this... If LGD still... Look, if okay. LGD still... Look, what the hell is happening? Wait, Fearness is going to die? No, he's out. Is LGD what, Jamal? You got to finish. If, if LGD like, still lose this game, this might be the most amount of Barons I think I've seen a team have True. like consecutively and still lose the game. <laughs> three, three is a lot. In 36 minutes, like, three is a lot. I feel like the number four or number five has to be a record. Surely there's an LCS team out there. Sorry to throw shade. <laughs> that has had too many Barons, you know, still can't end the game. I feel like that's the region that feels very relevant. Maybe now's not the time to throw shade. But hey, at the very least, LGD with another Baron. The game goes on. They only lost one Nexus turret. No backdooring really available right now. And I guess we wait for the next Dragon? I, I guess. Or we wait for IG to try and force with the last team fight. It's what? I think uh, for IG, I'm kind of surprised they have Kryon on the top side right now. I feel like you'd probably want YSKM up there, but that's the allocation they've gone for at the minute. But uh, I'm trying to think, like, as IG, because LGD have been so good at, you know, base defense and just generally finding picks, do you just try and continue to commit to the side lane plays? Because I feel like the side lane plays have been arguably the most successful when the side laners have been left to their... Uh, lonesome, right? It feels like when IG overcommit to the side to try and protect said side lane, that's when things become a bit problematic. For now, though, that aside, for LG just having to try and siege up where they can right now with 90 seconds still left on the Baron. This game going to come out of brush, not going to pull a spooky surprise as Kryon's back up in that top lane, mid getting pushed, but IG have to pay the respect. I mean, LG have grouped up as a four man and they are taking turrets down so quickly. A lot of gold being sent over to this team, whether it's as relevant or not. And now looking for their first inhibitor turret. Yeah, first almost 40 minutes in. That's a teleport. Oh. They'll see it because it's on a control ward, but the engage is coming in, Jake. Nate just grasped this huge death charge as well. On the return, excuse me, wasn't actually used. We got a knock up there in the end from Tian Jen as YS Cam was spotted on a ward. LGD backing away. They pulled the TP. And they haven't lost a single member, so we continue to wait with bated breath. As IG aren't able to find the fight, YSK am still thirsty for it. Does want it, but they're just trying their best to stay away. As the re-siege comes back in, 20 seconds still left on the Baron. YSK oh. is on the same flank again, he'll be spotted, but I think LGD have committed a little bit too yep. far. And they're going to get We're engaged go. on surely, but aren't chunked out. They're just a bit hesitant, IG. Just waiting, I mean, YSK again won't follow through so we wait and we see and i guess 20 seconds for the dragon ig don't want to pull the trigger jamata because they want that soul they want that advantage that makes the game a little bit easier for them especially with lgd backing away teleport being used wait uh, crying is obviously going to try and go for the end uh, but dragon they don't care okay this is an interesting one uh -huh. he teleports top to kill like a wave and a half and he's going to stay top. So if Venus teleports down... No, nope, the dragon's gone. Yeah. So, oh, okay. Um, but now Kryon can commit. They, he can end. They're, yeah. They're, they're all here. Hai has to go back to... <laughs> <laughs> what is going okay. on? Okay. Venus caught out. And this is complete yakety sack. Ulti onto Venus. There's the rocket helping out. They don't have that much damage, but they are stopping to get oh my God. And they've <laughs> taken his ulti. That's a lot. But the chompers are out. Arn should just get the kill here and does so, has split up, Kryon now take it on Hyjow, will get him as well, Tim is a little bit angry about that one, but Kryon now playing against time as the whole enemy team comes to the top side, inhibitor down, saving Private Ryan, it won't be done, LGD take him down, and this is just hilarity, 
if it finishes off our series. <sighs> have you missed the LPL, Jake? Yeah. Have you? What a Because I have. I, yeah. you know, yesterday was great. This game is great. Now IG on the cusp of trying to end out this 40 minute bomb burner. They've got the second inhibitor. It looks like they'll get the third. And maybe this is what will topple LGD. All right, they've been so damn good at holding on to this game. Yeah. Maybe three inhibitors is where they max out. Maybe this is critical mass. For now, IG looking to just reset. And I mean, 60 seconds on the Baron. This is as by the books as it can get, all right? Let all of the super minions push in. Go towards the Baron when you see everyone in LGD has to deal with it. And then you play your little dance and you wait until the minions end or LGD make a mistake. Surely, right? I don't think I don't think a book was involved in this game. I don't think anyone's looking at any textbook. I don't think it's by the book, Jamada. I think this is just whatever feels right for you. And as Baron comes up number four, I think it feels right to just fight for this one and see where it goes. They're being a little bit trepidatious, if that's the right word. I, I don't know. My English is absolutely <laughs> garbage for someone that speaks it regularly. But in 30 seconds, surely, guys, we get an answer. Like, surely, right? There's no right. way uh, this game know, continues on. You said no one's reading a book. I feel like the coaching staffs of both teams here are going to be throwing books <laughs> at LGD. Saying, read. We need to be educated again yeah. on how to close out. But for LGD again, it has to be said, still a very tenacious game. Being thrown so far behind in the early stages, right? 20 minutes into this game, they were down like five, 6,000 gold. But now another 20 minutes on, gold is even. Everyone is more or less at full build, right? A couple of people a little bit short. Mm -hmm. And IG have been held off, right? They've been kind of fighting in the trenches to do their yep. best to end this game. And right now, with the Baron up, now you imagine it's time. But, I mean, Kryon was on the bottom side of the map. We've practically... Or rather, Wisecam was running out of mana on the bottom side of the map. They both have teleport, almost. So, I think they're trying to play the long con here with yeah. the supers. I, <laughs> it's a bold strategy, but I think it should just okay. buy them the space to get the Baron. They're backing off for now. LGD are moving into position. Wink is zoning away. That's Meteor. Ulti comes out. Baron's not that quick without the second AD carry. Crying and Wise Camp are running in. Baron away. LGD are grouped up three here. It's a 2v2 in base. Ulti's ahoy as Crying is doing the damage. Look at this man again getting Timbers out of the face. As Phoenix gets chunked out. Wise Camp on his deathbed. Oh, no. Tries to run in and he dies. Meanwhile, Nautilus flashes, Wait, and the LPL still... is unrelenting. An open nexus for Kryon. Venus and Hyjal are trying to get him off. Venus will die. Hyjal's next, and Kryon has just shown that his time on the bench was misplaced. Welcome back to the LPL for an absolute epitome of a closer. And welcome to your stint on IG with a 2-0 opener to the split. What a hilarious back end of this game. I wonder how IG and LGD are feeling after this one. Have to feel a little bit bad for LGD, right? They held out for so long that it did just keep you on the edge of your seat, wondering whether or not they'd be able to close out. But eventually, it was about the side lanes, right? From Kryon, from YSKM, so much pressure on either side of the map. And eventually, they just full send it G2 2019 style on the bottom side of the map with both their solo laners and teleport, but they managed to commit and end the game. Yep. And they'll close out a 2-0 series. <laughs> I just, it, that was no 2-0. I don't get what anyone <laughs> says. That was no 2-0. We all know. I don't understand how IG let the, their claws off that game, but I mean, things to work on, right? Being real with this team, it is yeah. a newer roster, Tian Gen and Kryon have joined the squads over Gideon and Dove, who were here last split. And there's a lot of things to iron out. I feel like we can say one thing, though. Arn and Wink were pretty solid. Yes. Uh, but, I mean, YSKM sees blood in the water and has to go in. Whether he dies or not, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's just, that's YSKM. So, what a banger. What a banger of a 2-0 from this team. Yeah, it was, it was really enjoyable. I think if we... You know, take a second to breathe and, and bring ourselves back down to mm. earth, like you were saying, right? Uh, I, I think the, the point on YSKM is, is very much true. I, I think this team still looks like it needs a little bit of discipline, specifically through the top lane. But generally, yeah. I like that they're willing to just, you know, do exactly what they were doing in spring as a team, which is kind of just full send on a lot of the plays, right? Uh, once that game opened up, even though it was a very slow early game, 
you started to see the, the willingness start to come back out from the IG side. Um, I think on the opposite end for LGD, that was a game where they had to try and, I want to say snowball, but like play out mm -hmm. early objective team fights, right? The first Herald, second Dragon, but those things never really came because it was IG who was slowing down the game so much in the first 15 yeah. or 20 minutes. So, you know, great stuff to see from IG's first series and Cryon and Tianjian look like great additions to this team. And it looks like uh, a great engine has been uh, placed inside <laughs> of the moving car, the moving monster truck sometimes uh, that can be IG. And look, again, you know, a lot of positive notes to take away. <clears throat> Excuse me, that, that, you know, for IG in particular, uh, a lot of their skirmishes, a lot of their team fights look very sound. They look very dangerous when they group up. Uh, but just a couple of things like overextending through mid, or the, that yeah. overextension that, that pushed them so far back in the game and made it competitive for LGD. I think LGD, you know, we're expecting them to work on a lot of things because they're also, they've got a Korean in the roster this time around. There is a very different LGD squad driven by someone who on LSB was a name, but not really a driving force. So I'm curious to how they develop Jamada, considering that LGD had pretty low expectations, not only from their last split, but from the lineup that they're fielding. Yeah, no. Um, and even though the expectations are low, I still would like to see more, right? And mm. trying to find that spark that was starting to put a little bit of faith in some of the LGD believers in terms of not necessarily making playoffs, but having, you know, a really solid showing uh, in summer. Uh, just because yeah. it was a couple of good results, right? They took down Top Esports in a 2-0. Even though Top Esports were kind of spiraling, still the gap between these two teams should be so gargantuan that even aspiring Top Esports should take <laughs> down an LGD side. Uh, and it was also, I think it was BLG. They gave EDG a bit of a run for their money. So, you know, this LGD 